A former doctor on trial for murder came face to face with his patient's widow, and she told the jury that she has no doubt the doctor killed her husband. You have a vested interest in this case, do you not? Um, he killed my husband. And, and I realize that's your belief. No, it's my. It's not my belief. That's what happened. I was there. You were not. William Hustle is charged with murdering 14 patients who were near death uh, with fentanyl. His defense team says he was providing comfort care to the dying patients. HLN trial correspondent Jane Casares has been following the twists and turns and, and updates us this morning. Um, Jean, it seemed like um, some the testimony got a little contentious. With, with some of the, the loved ones. Yeah, first day yesterday that it did get contentious. And Chris Allison, who we just heard from, this is who I went to Columbus to interview uh, for my piece that aired on HLN right when the trial was beginning. So I got to know her and, and she is angry. And she and her husband had a loving relationship because she told me all about it. But in the direct testimony yesterday, uh, she talked about what she had told me, that it was a Saturday night. They were about to watch television. All of a sudden, he started hyperventilating. He said, call the ambulance. She did. Hyperventilating resolved itself, and but the blood sugar was up of her husband. So they took him to the hospital, and the fact is, he coded three times in the emergency room, which means his heart stopped beating. So thank goodness, in a sense, he got to the hospital right then. And the blood pressure was up. Sugars were extraordinarily high. They went, they took him to CT scan to, to look at the brain. Then they took him into the ICU. And he was on a ventilator at that point. And she testified that Dr. Husel said to her, I believe he's 99.9% .9 brain dead. And to get her permission uh, and her daughter's permission to take the ventilator out. And she gave the permission. And he died shortly after that. And she definitively believes that it's because of the medication. She did say, we're going to give him something to make him comfortable, but didn't describe what that was. Now, on cross-examination, the defense brought out that, that he was so sick in that emergency room, so sick, because she hadn't really brought it out in her, her direct testimony. And that's part of this also. But the next person that took the stand was, uh, uh, his name was, Robert Hodge, his mother was Jeremiah Hodge, and he testified that it was on Easter and they were all together and mother had a cold, she wasn't feeling too well, so she went home a little bit early and a little bit later he finds out the ambulance is taking her to the hospital. And he really didn't quite understand what happened at all. He didn't even know that she was on a vent or if she was on oxygen. He did say the family agreed she didn't want to live on a ventilator forever. But on cross-examination, when the defense was really sort of gently questioning him, but with strength, listen to what he said. Is it fair to say that this isn't a situation that you really, that you really want to remember? No. Is this difficult? Who would? Seeing your mother like that in the ICU? Would you want to see your mother like that in the ICU? Okay. Relax for a second. You don't get to ask questions. You know, it really shows the emotions here, Robin, because to have your loved one be taken to the hospital, and it's amazing, medically speaking, how fast these patients went down. So fast. I mean, they're at a party. They, it's an Easter celebration, and then they're suddenly in the ER and the ICU. But also the fact to get that call months later, we believe your loved one died of an overdose, not a natural death. I mean, that had to be devastating to hear. And 40 witnesses have taken the stand so far. Jean Casares, thank you for your coverage of it. Thank you, Robin.